What do you think of when you hear the word treasure? Treasure in the scriptures is related to money, jewels, gold, silver, vessels, ointment, spices, grain, food, instruments of war, hordes of coin, or any possession which is considered to be of wealth or great value, which a king, a government, or a person stored in a safe guarded place to keep thieves and robbers from coming to steal it. There were no banks or safety deposit boxes back then, so the storehouses of the emperors and kings back then were heavily guarded. When enemy forces invaded a country, they generally headed for the storehouses where the treasures were because there was the valuable stuff. Those who weren't kings, just your regular wealthy person, they would bury their treasures beneath their houses, in caves, or in fields. Many fought for their treasures. Many died to protect their treasure. A treasure is something you would kill for because, because it's yours. It's it's mine. Can't have anyone else taking my treasure. It's, it's my treasure. It's my value possession. Mine. I love the movie The Goonies. Anybody seen The Goonies? Yes. Love that movie. It's a movie I remember watching as a kid. And no matter when it comes on, no matter what I have going on today, I'll watch it. Um, it was on a few weeks ago. It's a movie about a group of kids call themselves The Goonies. And a wealthy family in town is going to buy up all the land and build a golf course, I believe. And they'll be forced to move away from each other. And they're up in the attic of Mikey's house. Mikey's the main character. And they're rummaging through the dad's collection of antiques. And they find this treasure map. And this map is supposed to lead to a treasure of a pirate named One-Eyed Willie. So they set out to find this treasure because if they find the treasure... They'll be able to use all the goods, all the possession, all the, the, the money, the jewels, the gold to buy the land and they won't have to move. And throughout their search, they run into all these booby traps that Willie set up to protect his treasure. And they find skeletons of men who fell victim to these booby traps. But they kept going, risking their lives to get that treasure. They also, throughout the duration of the treasure hunt, had these mean people, the Fratellis, Chasing after them because they wanted the treasure too. They were trying to kill the Goonies, but the Goonies kept going, risking their lives for the treasure. Their search led them to this huge cave with a pirate ship inside. It wasn't in the cave like it had to be dug out, but picture like a garage where, let's say, Willie backed his boat into a cave and then covered the opening with these huge rocks, essentially burying himself inside the cave, all for the treasure, all for the treasure. And even on the ship, there were booby traps to protect that treasure. And they eventually they find Willie and all his men, the skeletons, sitting around this table with the treasure spread out all on the table, diamonds and gold and pearls. They were with that treasure to death, protecting it to death. And if you haven't seen the movie, I'm not going to spoil the ending for you. But this just goes to show you the great lengths people go to to both find and protect their treasure. Risking their lives, setting traps, killing, burying themselves inside a cave, dying, all for treasure. Today we keep our treasure in a safe, secret, hidden place where only we know. Or we keep them in a secure facility where it's guarded by armed guards. Kept in a big steel safe with all these locks and codes and levers. Most are fireproof so that it's a fire. Your treasure won't be damaged. And all of these facilities have alarm codes and lasers that shoot across the floor. That will sound off if someone poses a threat. If someone breaks in to threaten your treasure. There's surveillance cameras to keep watch over your treasure 24 hours a day. And thieves are constantly coming up with schemes and plots to steal your treasure. Because it's so highly valued. A treasure isn't just money or wealth related. 
I think of a mother and her baby. They, whoever they is, say that there's no greater love than a person can have for another person than a mother has for her child. A mother, a father, a loved one would kill for their child, would kill to protect that loved one, Christian or not, knowing the truth or not, knowing the difference between right or wrong, knowing the consequences. If someone threatens to harm their child, their loved one, their treasure, they would kill or be killed for that child, for that loved one, for that treasure. And most have baby monitors, audio, so they can hear every breath. They check on that baby numerous times throughout the day just to see if they're okay. Some have video cameras set up so that they can watch the baby on their phone if they're away all hours of the day. And they'll sing songs to the baby to keep them quiet. And you have to take a, a bath and hand sanitizer before you could be allowed to touch the baby. Sometimes you have to put on a hazmat suit because that's their treasure. That's their treasure. I think of a man in his car. I was watching a car auction on television a few weeks ago and it, 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 it was sad. So much emotion involved in these car auctions. It, it kind of broke my heart because some of these guys pay millions, millions of dollars for a car. A car that they won't drive, a car that'll just sit in their garage and they'll just Stare at it. <laughs> and you have to take a bath and hand sanitizer before you're allowed to, <laughs> to look at the car. And once you pass the background check to be allowed to look at the car, what do they say? Don't get too close. St stand back. Don't touch. Don't, don't sneeze. Don't breathe. As a matter of fact, just, just go away. Just go away. Because that's their treasure. That's their treasure. If you could choose anything in the world to be in your treasure chest, and let's say this room here is your treasure chest, and you're given the power and authority to choose from anything, and let's say that that thing that you choose can actually fit in here, no matter what it is, what would you choose? What would you choose to be in your treasure chest? Close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes for a second. I want to I want to paint a picture for you and, and envision this. Picture the, the deepest, darkest night in a forest. And there's there's nobody around. And there's no mosquitoes or bugs because this is a special forest. And you're camped out by a small river. And you can hear the flowing of the crystal clear water running over the rocks and the logs. And it's a bit chilly, but not too chilly. There's a small campfire burning and you could feel the warmth of it on your back. And you look up at the millions and millions of stars in the sky. They look like shining diamonds spread out over a soft black velvet cloth. And you can see so far into space, as far as you could ever see. And there's a, a meteor shower. So the whole sky looks like it's falling. It, it looks like the whole sky is spinning as if you're in a vortex of some kind. But you're calmly standing still. And off in the distance, you can see the northern lights, all the different shades of green and pink and blue. It's, it's completely quiet. And you don't hear a thing but the crackling fire consuming the wood. It doesn't even seem real. It's a, a, a picture-perfect sight. Perhaps that may be a, a treasure of yours. Keep your eyes closed one more. Picture the, the blazing bronze sun set over a deep blue ocean. Every shade of blue you can think of in the water glistening with what looks like gold leaf and diamonds reflecting the warm sun. And you can feel the warmth of the sun on your body like someone you love giving you a hug. There's a, 
a slight breeze coming out of the north on a, a perfect 73 degree evening. There's clear sky with just a, a few bleached clouds scattered like cotton. The brilliancy of yellow and orange of the sun fades all the way back to the dark purples and black of night overhead. Two seagulls fly into the sunset and eclipse it to make a shadow. Dolphins spring up out of the water along with a family of humpback whales. A group of palm trees stand nearby to provide shade for you on a spotless white sandy beach. You listen to the peaceful crash of the waves ashore. It doesn't even seem real. It's a picture perfect sight. That may be a treasure for your chest. You could open your eyes. If you could choose any one, if you could choose any one to be in your treasure chest, who would that be? Let's say this room is your treasure chest and you were given the power and authority to choose any one in the world, alive or dead. Who would you choose? I think of the story of Floyd and Violet Hartwig, who knew each other as children growing up in Eastern California, a small farming community. Floyd was a decorated Navy sailor, home on leave when the romance sparked at a dance hall. They got married in 1947, and Floyd showered Violet with affection while he was away with love letters, perhaps singing her love songs when they were with each other. When Floyd returned home from the Navy for good, they raised three small children on their small farm where they raised cotton and turkeys, grew cotton and raised turkeys. <laughs> Violet helped on the ranch and kept the house in order. She prepared breakfast each and every morning before seeing him off to go work on the ranch. They were dedicated to each other. Even the people who met them said they had some kind of connection. They had four grandchildren and 10 great grandchildren. This past Christmas, 2014, family noticed that Violet's dementia was taking a turn for the worst. In late January this year, 2015, a doctor said that Floyd's failing kidneys would only give him two weeks to live. Sensing that they were both close to death, the family moved the couches from their ranch home, moved in their hospice beds, and pushed their beds together. They then put their hands holding one another. Floyd and Violet's hands holding one another. And that's how they died. That's how they died. Together. Holding hands. February 11, 2015, Floyd died first. He was 90 years old. Five hours later, Violet died. Five hours later, holding hands. She was 89. They were married for 67 years. There's no doubt Floyd would choose Violet to be in his treasure chest. Perhaps you would choose your spouse. I was recently watching Animal Planet on TV. I like those shows. It's amazing to see how God created the animals and how they function. It's... Anyways, the show was on gorillas. And they showed this mama gorilla and her baby gorilla. And they raised their babies just like us. As she was holding it and breastfeeding it, fought off other gorillas that came to try to threaten her baby. But then this group of gorillas came in and invaded their territory, and there was a big fight. And sadly, the baby was thrown from the tree and died. But the mother refused to accept that the baby was dead. She still carried it around and held it and nurtured it as though it was still alive. She knew it was dead. She refused to accept it. Eventually, she left it behind, but there's no doubt who her treasure would be. Perhaps you would choose one of your loved ones to be in your treasure chest. So if you have the power and authority to choose anyone or anything in the world to be in your treasure chest, who or what would it be? With this room here is your treasure chest, who or what would you choose?
Jesus said this about treasure in Matthew 6. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be also. This speaks of a person's greatest desire, possession. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. The heart is the center of everything. Where your heart is, that's where you are. That's, that's where your thoughts are about. That's where your actions are towards. Speaking of the Lord, what do you think he would choose to be his treasured possession? Because he actually has the power and authority to choose anyone or anything in the world. He could, he could choose that sunset on the beach. He could choose that starry night in the forest. He could choose the car, the baby, the diamonds, the jewels, the gems. He could choose not only from earth, but from heaven as well. I believe that just a glimpse of heaven, just a one time, just a, just a blink, just a blink of heaven would be the most glorious, magnificent, jaw-dropping, bone-chilling sights we could ever see. Multiply a sunset by infinity. There must be like a section in heaven that the Lord has blocked off as just like, as just his, you know, just a section of heaven. That, that would probably be what he would choose. Or, or perhaps an angel. An angel, yes. And maybe Michael. He'd probably choose Michael because the angels, are, they're literally in heaven with God. They serve him firsthand. They're completely obedient to him. They worship him wholly. They, they, they praise him fully. I think they even fly. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's probably who he would choose to be in his treasure. That's probably the person he would choose. Because, I mean, we're talking about the Lord. Who or what would the Lord your God choose to be his treasured possession? The Bible says that the Lord your God has chosen you. You. To be a people for his treasured possession. Deuteronomy 7, 6 says this, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Let me expound on this a bit because everything regarding salvation begins with this choosing. Nobody chooses Christianity. Nobody chooses Jesus. Jesus even said it himself. You didn't choose me. I chose you. It all begins with this choosing. We love. Why? Because he first loved us. Turn to Ephesians 1, please. Turn to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. This, this truth of choosing... Or election, as it's theologically referred to, is an act of God before creation in which he chooses some people to be saved, not based on good morals, not based on seeing whether or not they would come to repentance in the future and have faith, but only because of his sovereign good pleasure. There are many verses that support this truth. For example, 1 Thessalonians 1.4, 2 Thessalonians 2.13, Romans 9, Romans 11. They all speak of this choosing. Ephesians 1.4. Even as he chose us in him, Jesus, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. This means that before God spoke this world into existence, he chose you to be his. He, he, he set you aside to be, to be his. Before he said, let there be light. He knew you. He knew you. For, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In order that he might be firstborn among many brothers and those whom he predestined. He called. Those who he called, he justified. Those who he justified, he glorified. Romans 8, 29. Not only does this show the salvation process, but it also shows that God has always acted for the good of those he set aside. When you look to the distant past, you see the foreknowledge and predestination of God. 
When you look to the recent past, you see the calling and justification of God. When you look to the future, you see the glorification in perfect resurrected bodies. From eternity to eternity, God has always acted with good in mind for his people. So then, if God has always worked for good in the past, if God will always work for good in the future, will he not now always work for the good of his people? As plainly as I can state it, before God created the world, he chose people to simply be his because he wanted to, because he can. God chose us simply because he decided to bestow his love upon us. It's unconditional because it's not conditioned upon anything that God sees in us that makes us worthy to be his. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. You are holy to the Lord. Holy meaning separated from sin and devoted to seeking his honor. The definition contains both the relational quality, separation from, and a moral quality. The separation is from evil or sin and the devotion is to the good of God's own honor or glory. The Lord says in Leviticus 20:26, 20, For you shall be holy to me. I, the Lord, am holy and have separated you. From the peoples that you should be mine. I believe it was O.R. Jones who said this and I quote. Things are separate because they're holy. Not holy because they're separate. I almost get the image of God holding the world in one hand. And his people in the other. Separate. But, but that's not it. Because we're still in the world. So envision this. You've seen the cell phone commercials right with with. The, the providers in, in, in the areas that they provide service to. Let's say company X is represented by red dots. And company X is on the west coast. So most of their red dots are on the west coast. Now company Y is represented by blue dots. And they, they provide a greater coverage area. So their blue dots extend from the west coast into the midwest. But now company Z... The commercial maker, they have all the coverage. So, so they have green dots scattered all throughout the country. That's kind of the image I get when I think about God looking down on the earth. But he doesn't see dots. He sees diamonds. We'll say his people are represented by diamonds. Because we're talking about treasure. And he looks down and he sees these. He looks down on all the earth and he sees these, these shiny little diamonds scattered out. And it doesn't seem like there are very many. It seems like there are very few. Because the truth is, not everyone is chosen to be his treasured possession. He didn't set everyone apart for himself. He didn't set everyone apart. He, he set some. And I believe we, as those chosen ones, need to live as those chosen ones. We need to know and live as a privileged people. I mean, not everyone has God in them and on their side. We do. Not everyone can come into the presence of God and rest. We can. Not everyone is listened to by God with an attentive ear and a promise to act on their behalf. We are, but most of us live as if we don't, going about our everyday lives in worry and fear with anxiety and doubt about everything that comes our way. Is God really with me? Mm, I believe so. Is God really listening? Oh, I think so. Is God going to help me and guide me through this? I hope so. Is he pleased with me? Is he mad at me? Does he love me? I think back of my past life. Men, testosterone, pride, and alcohol don't mix. Especially if there's a female involved. Guys fight each other. That's just what they do. Cain and Abel, four chapters into the Bible. No alcohol involved, no females involved. But anyways, whenever I went out... I knew I was safe if I had Big J with me. Big J was one of my buddies. Big J was just big. Big. And he liked fighting. He actually enjoyed getting hit. 
And I knew that if any problems arose, they'd soon be settled once Big J stepped on scene. I mean, imagine walking around with, with Mike Tyson your whole life. Mike Tyson's with you. You know, the, the confidence that would give you, the comfort, the courage from a human, from a human. I was watching a documentary the other day, and um, there was a testimony given about the Israelites. Once Israel declared their independence, within a couple hours, they were invaded from all, all sides. And the testimony was from an Egyptian, an Egyptian. And what happened was there were four Israelis camped out behind the rock. And there was a whole camp of Egyptians, like 50. And they were shooting back and forth at each other. And all of a sudden the shooting stopped. And the four Israelis get up and all the Egyptians threw their guns down and they were surrendered. And these four Israelis took captive these 50 Egyptians. And they're walking back to the camp. And the Israeli asked the Egyptian, he says, hey, you guys, what happened? You guys could have totally just took us out. There's four of us, there's 50 of you. And he says, you were surrounded by these huge soldiers that looked like they were angels. I get chills just thinking about it. Same documentary, different scene. Five Israelis, tanks and, and, and everything, Egyptians. And they're shooting at each other. All of a sudden, a shooting stops. Egyptians surrender. Israelis take them captive. And this is an Egyptian giving this testimony now. Not an Israeli. And, and the Israeli says, hey, what, what happened? There's so many of you. There's so little of us. You guys could have totally just, just took us. And, and, and the guy said, we, we couldn't. We, we, we couldn't shoot. We froze. Our arms were frozen. We literally couldn't shoot. We couldn't do anything. That's what I'm trying to get you. It's, what should we say to these things? If God is for us, who could be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Comfort I had from Big J, the comfort you have from Mike Tyson, you walk through this life on earth with the God, with the God, the most high God that not everyone has. And it's not because you said, God, please walk through this life with me. It's because he said, I'm going to walk through this life with you. If you are saved, if you are in Christ, if you are a member of God's family, it's because he chose you. Please get your minds around this. God chose you. God chose you to be his treasured possession. The God, creator of all things, sustainer of all things, ruler of all things, completely independent, needing nothing, lacking nothing, by himself, glorified, by himself, satisfied, by himself, magnified, timeless, spaceless, boundless, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present, from everlasting to everlasting, chose you to be his. I, I, I can't take that. I can't. It's too much. It's too much. I'm a treasured possession of the Most High God. I'm a treasured possession of the Most High God. You're a treasured possession of the Most High God. Can you grasp that? Can you grasp that? The Most High God who created all, has all, is all, chose you. Chose you to be his treasured possession. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Because when it does, everything changes. Everything changes. That changes how you feel about yourself, how you feel about others, how you feel about your problems, your situations, how you feel about this life. It changes how you live, how you think, how you speak, how you act, how you pray. It changes everything. It changes everything. When you really get that, when you really get that God chose you, you just, you just, what is this life? What is this life? Do I really have problems? 
Do I really have a reason to complain? Do I, do I really need to worry and stress or have anxiety? Do, do, do I really, when you really get that God shows you, you're here because of him. You're his because of him. I mean, what else is there? What else is there? There's nothing. And, and this feeling of completeness and peace and joy and hope and love makes everything else just disappear. Everything else is... Huh. What? Our jobs and benefits can be taken away from us. Our homes and vehicles can be vehicles can be taken away from us. Our health or freedom can be taken away from us. But His love and peace can never be taken away from us. His mercy and grace can never be taken away from us. He can never be taken away from us. We can never be removed from his treasure chest ever. Jesus said this, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who is greater, given them to me, no one will snatch them from his hand. And I and the father are one. And we discussed what people do for their treasure. They hide their treasure for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. They guard their treasure. The Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. They watch over their treasure. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. They sing for their treasure. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. They fight for their treasure. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. They give up everything and die. For their treasure. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He did this. He gave it all up. Gave up all the luxuries of heaven, the comfort, the glory, the honor, gave up fellowship with the Father himself, literally, to come down to earth to kill sin and death and die for his treasure. It's all because of Jesus. <clears throat> It's all because of Jesus that we can be the holy treasured possession because the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And because of that sin, you're separated and not separated from everyone else as holy, separated from the holy God as a sinner. And there's nothing you can do to close that separation gap. You need someone to stand in that separation gap. There's no amount of good works because there are no good works. The wage of sin is death. So what God did because he loves you, because he chose you, because he set you apart as holy. For his own, is he sent his own, his only son, his holy son, Jesus, from heaven to earth, who is fully God. And Jesus lived that holy, sin-free life that God requires for you. And then he willingly took your sins upon himself as he offered himself to death as a sacrifice to the Father. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And because he did this, you're washed clean. You're washed clean of sin, having his righteousness imputed to you, making you holy. You can then cross over that separation gap to the Father through him. He's the way. He's the only way. And if you've never heard this before, you too can be saved from the wrath of God by grace through faith in Christ. It's all a free gift of eternal life. All you have to do is call out to him. Call out to him right now. Ask for forgiveness. Acknowledge your sin. Repent of your sinful life and place your personal trust in Jesus Christ as a, as a living person. And this becomes a relationship that lasts for all eternity. Jesus says this in Luke 15. What woman, having ten silver coins, treasure, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Let me give this image of the Lord's... I, I, I get a picture of like the Lord's treasure chest being knocked over by Satan. And, and these coins scatter all throughout earth in sin. Because Satan's the thief that comes up with the plots and schemes to try to steal the treasure. But he can't. But he tries. And these coins spill out all over the earth. And then Jesus comes down. 
looking for those coins. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, when one is found, all of heaven rejoices. Because these coins are of such high value. They belong to the Lord. They're his treasured possession. 1 Peter 2.9 says this, You are a chosen race. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim. I repeat, that you may proclaim, proclaim, tell, announce, speak out, share, spread, witness, evangelize, proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We don't know who the chosen ones are. And because we don't know, we go. We go and tell everyone, everywhere, because the gospel message is available to all. It's not only that he knows us, but he chose us. Not only did he choose us, but he wants to use us. This isn't meant to confuse you, but you need to tell the people that don't know the things that you do. And that all rhymed. Bow your heads and close your eyes as, as we close, as we close. Picture a wealthy person giving the Lord a tour of their mansion. And while they're giving the tour, they point out all their treasures. This is my Pablo Picasso I acquired from a gallery in England for $179 million. Here's my 1931 Bugatti Royale that I purchased for $8.75 million. Here's my Gulfstream G650 jet that I purchased for $7 million. But this, this here is my most prized possession. This is what I choose as my treasured possession. And, and he's holding the Hope Diamond in the palm of his hand. And he says, I purchased this for $350 million. And then there's the Lord giving the wealthy person a, a tour of his mansion. And the Lord says, here's my sunset on the beach. Here's my starry night in the forest. Here's all my angels. Here's my universe. But this here, this is what I choose as my treasured possession. And he's holding you in the palm of his hand. And he says, I purchased this with the blood of my son. Some words closely related to the word treasure. Adore. Approve. Admire. Be crazy over, be crazy for, be crazy about. Be stuck on, be sweet on, go for, be gone on. Cherish. To delight in, to take pleasure in. Blessing. Marvel at, wonder at, beloved. Enjoy, esteem, exalt. Object of affection. That's you. That's, that's you. Right now, this room is filled with his treasured possession. If you are in Christ, you're the one he stares at. You're the one he watches over. You're the one he hides and guards and protects and fights for and died for. You. Out of everything and everyone on earth and in heaven, you are his treasure. You're the one created in his image. You. Please, family, live like it. Please live like it. Let it be a treasured possession of yours. To know that you're a treasured possession of his. In Jesus' name. Oh Lord, my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I
can't see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe displayed Then things my 